Hey, what's going on, guys? Coach Bronson. It is Christmas Eve. Hope everybody's having a great day. I actually just got home from spending the evening with my family, had some dinner, opened some presents. We do this stuff uh, usually Christmas Eve, um, and then we do our own thing. And then probably we'll go back over again with my parents, my brother, sister, and immediate family and do dinner tomorrow as well. Um, but uh, it's actually past my bedtime right now. Um, but I told myself I was going to do this today, so before I go to bed, I wanted to give an update on how things are going with my cut. Um, higher fat, lower pro lower protein than I'm used to. Uh, some of you guys know what I'm doing. Basically, I'm working with Rob, Rob Sykes, Keto Savage, and he's coaching me through a high fat protocol to cut body fat. Okay, sounds a little counterproductive or counterintuitive, but it works, okay? Um, obviously it works. He's been a pro bodybuilder forever. Um, and I'm not planning on getting on stage, but I want to see how low I can get. Uh, basically the lowest I've ever gotten as a carnivore on my own doing my, doing my normal thing, which is lower fat, higher protein was 8%. I think is the last, the, the lowest in body I've gotten on an in body 8%. Um, I want to see if I can get to five doing it with high fat. So that's the goal. That's one of the things we're looking at. Anywho, um, things that we're looking at this week. So I did an update a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm actually going to try to start doing these more regularly, like weekly, uh, just kind of because things are changing week to week and we're getting, we're starting to get into the part of the process where the challenge of feeling hungry is going to start coming into play. Okay. When I do my normal protocol, the higher protein, lower fat, Hunger is not an issue because I pretty much ignore the calories from protein. So I can eat a lot of food in quantity and fill myself. Protein is very satiating. So I can fill that up. I can I can feel full most of the time. And I don't ever feel like I'm having to not eat when I'm hungry. Okay. We just got into a point with my macros this week. Um, I am... Um, what am I at? About one... I probably should have looked this up before we started, um, before I started recording this. I wonder if I can come out. Nope, I can't go out and then look at it and come back. Um, let's look at it. Let's hold on. Let's, we're going to go over to my computer because, like I said, I wasn't thinking. Hold on. We're going to pull up my macros and we'll look at it. And we'll talk about how it's progressed. All right. Let's see here. Macros for Bronson. Do, 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 do. Okay, so when we started in the middle of October, okay, the middle of October, I was doing about 2480, 24, 2500 calories a day, 220 grams of fat, 110 grams of protein, 15 grams of carbs. That is completely opposite the way that I normally do it. My normal, for me, the way that I do it, my normal uh, macros are the opposite. So I'm usually around 220 protein and 110 or less fat. So that was totally different for me. Where we're at now, so 220 for fat, 110 for protein. We've increased that and flipped things as, we go, as we've gone. So I am now looking at Let's see, we're at week, hold on, what week are we in? So we started on week one, day one. Oh, we don't have it in here by weeks, we have it in here days. Okay, so I am on day number... Seventy-five. All right, we're getting closer to even, okay? We're getting closer to one-to-one -one ratio of protein to fat. So I'm at 175 fat and 155 protein, okay? Um, that's much more comfortable for me. The last couple of weeks have been much more easy. It's been much more easy for me to eat and feel full um, and not feel like I'm starving myself. This week has been okay, but I have not left a meal this week and not thought to myself, do I want to have my other meal now or do I want to wait? Because that first meal of the day is not quite as satisfying from a satiety perspective as what I'm used to. Um, I'm, it's okay. I've got the control to do it. That's fine. 
Um, I know that in four or five hours, I'm going to sit down and eat again, um, and it will be fine. And then in the evening, usually, if I'm feeling hungry, I just just load up on the water and electrolytes and slam that before I go to bed. Um, and that's pretty good. But this is where the challenge starts. This is where it starts getting to be um, challenging. Next week, so right now, so I started off this process 75 days ago. I started off this process at 2,500 calories, just under 2,500 calories. I'm at 2,250 right now, okay? Next week, we're going to cut again. I'm going to go down to 170 fat. We're going to go up to 160 protein, okay? Now, remember, even though we're adding protein grams, it's almost a double, it's a two-to-one ratio of calories lost. So it's nine nine calories for one gram of fat, four calories for one, for one uh, gram of protein, so if I cut out five, whatever five times nine is, and then I add five, I'm only getting 20, right? So I'm getting more than half of my the calories dropped than what I'm gaining out of adding protein. So just remember that my total protein is still, or my total calories are still going down. So it's interesting what I've been eating. Uh, people ask me all the time, what are you eating on this thing? That's higher fat, Okay. Um, this last, the last few weeks has been pretty simple. Um, I'm a simple guy. I don't like to spend a lot of time focusing and wasting energy. In my opinion, it's wasting energy trying to come up with a bunch of different ways to prepare food. It's all going to the same place. It all tastes good to me. So I'm just hammering down on what I like. Okay. I like lamb. I like eggs. I like butter. And that's pretty much it. So um, this week I did go to the store and I got some pepperoni to throw in a little twist, um, cause I really like pepperoni and I was kind of in the mood for it. Um, add some pepperoni to my, uh, ground lamb with eggs. So I cook up the lamb, I put it in a, in a, on a plate, leave some of the fat in there, add a little more butter, fry up some eggs, get some eggs, uh, over medium. So they're still runny. Um, and then I put the eggs on top of the lamb and then I pour the butter and the fat over top the whole thing. Um, and I do that two times a day. All right. So that's usually about, uh, eight eggs, um, six to eight eggs and a pound of lamb is what's good is what, is what I do every day. Um, I do, I have added in because my protein has gone up, uh, since when we started, when we first started this, my protein was so low, I could not do a shake. I like to do some kind of, uh, coffee shake in the morning. So a chocolate, I have Equip beef protein isolate, uh, chocolate flavored. I like to add that to my coffee in the morning. So I, I do that in the morning, have like a mocha coffee. Um, and that's my day. So coffee in the morning with some protein powder and then a bunch of lamb and eggs. And guys, I got to be honest with you, uh, add in some real salt, some of the different flavors. I got uh, the, um, the pepper salt, the garlic pepper salt. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, the onion salt, the garlic salt, even just the regular real salt guys. Um, I, I never am not excited to get my meals. Okay. Uh, I don't understand. I personally do not understand how anybody can say that they get bored eating lamb and eggs or beef and eggs every day because you cook it with some butter you put some good salt on it. It's freaking amazing. I'd not, that's just me. Anywho, that's what I'm eating. Um, what are some things that have changed for me? Um, how are things going, um, with my workouts? Okay. Also get asked questions about what am I doing for my workouts? How am I working out? How's my energy, my workouts, things like that. Um, my workouts have changed. Uh, you guys know me for the longest time. I was a CrossFitter. I did CrossFit. I'm a CrossFit coach. I love CrossFit. I think it's the single best um, program out there for anybody to get started doing a fitness routine. Okay, it's the most well-rounded. It hits most of the the, the checks and, and buttons. Um, and and I think that anybody getting started should start with CrossFit. Uh, that being said, I've done it for a long time. It's been over 10 years that I've been doing it. Um, I have experimented with other things. What I'm doing right now is an experiment. So not only am I experimenting with what I'm doing nutrition wise, but I'm also switching it up. So I spent the last year and a half. So COVID and post COVID has been focused solely on 
getting back to strength marks that I had pre-COVID and trying to surpass them. It's been focused solely on strength. I've been doing some crossfit stuff, doing a lot of functional movement, but mostly getting my strength back. Okay, I was able to set a bunch of PRs and a bunch of different things over the past summer. And moving into this phase where I'm trying to cut and get lean, I've been thinking about changing from a strength focus to a purely aesthetic focus, a purely size focus. So I'm changing the the things that I'm doing to be less functional uh, and more focus on building big muscles. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So now here's a couple things with that. Challenges, right? I'm trying to build while I'm cutting. Oh my gosh, is that even possible? I guess we'll find out. Um, and I'm using my lean mass on my in-body at-home scale. So I have a, a, an at-home scale, that I, an in-body HN20, um, which I love. I absolutely love it. it. tells me my my lean mass, my skeletal muscle mass. gives me all the information I need to know if I'm gaining lean mass while I'm also losing body fat, okay? So I get my body fat mass, body fat percentage, lean mass, all that stuff. And I can tell I'm cutting fat for sure, but you know what? I'm also gaining muscle, okay? It's possible to do both at the same time. Oh my God, all right? So um, the workouts that I'm doing, traditional bodybuilding, traditional bodybuilding. I'm doing right now, I'm exper- so I'm experimenting with different splits, different schedules, how many days a week, what I'm focusing on things like that. What I just started this week, I'm on day five. Okay. Uh, tomorrow will be day five, um, is a five day split of two leg days, two, four upper body days and one shoulder day. So basically I'm doing, um, we'll get into it a little bit. I won't get into too much specifics, but I'm doing day one is a leg day that's focused on anterior. So a lot of quads, Uh, Front squats, um, split squats, things like that. Day two is uh, back base. Okay, so I'm focusing more on pulls and rows and flies, less on the lats and the wideness. Okay, thinking more about thickness and and overall just working the center and upper back. Okay, and then I also do biceps. So I'm working, uh, I think that's the short head. Hold on, let's double check. Short head or long head. I'm working one of the other... Uh, primary bicep muscles. Day three is chest, mostly upper and a lot of incline work. Okay, I'm trying to build my chest a little bigger on the top. Um, And then tricep, long head. Okay. And then the fourth day is shoulders and core. So get some core work in there, do a lot of shoulders, try to get a little wider at the shoulders and build some uh, roundness in my delts. And then back to legs the next day. So the second leg day is more posterior chain. So more deadlifts, um, lunges, and uh, hamstring curls, things like that. Uh, remaining deadlifts, split, uh, staggered, staggered stance, remaining deadlifts, stuff like that. Um, then back again, but this time it's more pull, uh, pull downs. So a, more, a lot more lat engagement in the work that I'm doing there. Um, And then biceps again, but it's the opposite. So I think I did long head uh, in day one. I'm doing short head for biceps on the second day of biceps. Then day five, the last day of the week, is um, chest and triceps again, working more straight across the chest, working more on some some, uh, width in the chest. And then on the triceps, it's more the medial and lateral head of the triceps. So that's how I'm splitting up my week, five-day week, five-day split. Um, If I want to do something on day six, it'll be more functional stuff. Get into some maybe doing some carries, some sled work, um, some Turkish get-ups, things like that. Low intensity, just get my body moving, um, fully engaged, and keep some of that mobility and not lose it. Um, And then day seven will be a complete rest. Okay, so that's what I'm doing for my workouts. So far, um, this week has been the best week of the all the workouts I've had since we started in mid-October, okay? Um, it's been a very organized split. The volume has been perfect. One of the things I've been struggling with after these workouts is transitioning from a CrossFit style and a strength style to a um, size and hy- more um, 
sarcoplasmic hypertrophy style, it's been finding that level of work where I'm going to feel like I did something and feel the effect um, as opposed to do a workout, feel like in the workout, like I'm good. But then afterwards, an hour after two hour, two hours after the next day, I kind of don't feel like I did anything. Okay. Um, not, I'm not talking about feeling super sore all the time, but I do want to, for me, I do want to feel like there is a level of soreness that lets me know, yep, you did something. Okay. But that soreness should be gone within 24, 48 hours. Okay. 48 hours. If it goes into 72 hours, then I know I did a little too much. Okay. And the work that I found that I, that I got together this week has been perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So everything that I've done this week, next day I wake up, I'm like, yep, I got something in that's good. I should be good to go by the next time I hit this exercise and we're good to go. Um, all right. Overall, my energy levels have been great. That is the biggest change um, from doing high fat versus doing low fat. So on low fat, high protein, when I get to a point where I'm usually between 12 and 10%, I start getting just lethargic and laggy. Um, it's just not uh, uh, midway through the day. I feel like I need to eat. I feel like I need energy. Uh, my body fat is just getting to a point where it's low and I'm not taking in a lot of fat. So my body's just kind of saying, hey, I need more energy. I need more energy. Um, and it just affects me. So that's one of the things I'm looking at doing this as a high fat cut. Even though my calories are going to be way lower, when we get to the point where my calories are really low and my body fat's really low, it's going to be more fat. So I should have more energy, theoretically. That's the idea. We'll see how it goes. Um, my sleep has been fan freaking tastic. Once I got on a sleep schedule, which I'm off right now to be on this live, but that's okay. Um, it's been fantastic. My digestive system, guys, I, I can't even explain to you how amazing it is to eat clean and only have to go to the bathroom once a day. One time a day. That's it, guys. One time a day. Okay. Um, usually between 10 and 11 in the day, my body's like, hey, you got to go. I go three minutes. I'm out. I rarely use any toilet paper. It's the most amazing feeling to, to deal with that, particularly after the years and years and years of things I had to deal with, with what I was eating and how it affected my digestive system with IBS, um, explosive bowel movements and all sorts of other things. Okay. I know it's nasty, but it's life for a lot of people. It was life for me. It totally controlled a lot of the things and aspects of my life and it doesn't anymore. Um, that's it. So that's how things are going. We're on day 75. I'm feeling good. And um, if I remember, no, I'll remember because I'll put it in my calendar. I'll do this again next Friday. And I uh, hope you guys have a great Christmas. And I'll see you again soon. Peace out.